Okay, so today we are going to uh, try to prove this uh, uh, classification theorem of uh, ergodic measures on, um, for the action of uh, infinite periodic linear group on matrices. And first, uh, I would like to uh, introduce a um, very um, successful method for um, treating such uh, uh, problem. So um, this is called um, Bershik Bershikarov um, or Oshansky also method um, or Gautic method So, um, in this method, uh, um, the general setting is as follows. We consider a group a such that we have a, a growing chain of uh, compact subgroups So, here um, Every Kn are compact subgroup of uh, um, K infinity, and uh, this K infinity itself um, is usually not compact. It's a union of uh, all these compact subgroups. And we are interested in the um, group action of uh, this group K infinity, like U infinity or infinity S infinity, and in our case GL infinity ZP, um, this group acts on a complete metric separable space. Separable means there exists uh, a countable then subset. Then um, recall that uh, uh, yesterday in exercise, we the first exercise in the first exercise, we want to classify the simple classification of ergodic uh, measures for um, a group action by a compact group. It's just uh, orbital measures, and in fact, this is sort of true in. Um, this uh, group that can be approximated by a uh, compact group. So here is the precise statement. Uh, this is a theorem originally by Vekshik and uh, finally turns out to be very successful by uh, a series of papers by these people. Um, it says the following. So intuitively, um, we have a base X, and we have the action of K infinity. So if this K infinity is just Km, the sub, uh, compact subgroup, then we know that ergodic measures are just a point and some orbit. This is uh, K and Zero. Then, so intuitive says any ergodic measures, any ergodic measures on of this action can be approximate by a sequence by a sequence of orbital measures generated by a uh, generated by a single point so we have an x zero so this is the support of uh, uh, a measure for 
like Km. Then we have a bigger group, so the orbit will be bigger. So the union will be uh, the Km plus one orbit and the Km plus two, three, four, five. Then finally, uh, the orbit gets more and more, uh, in some sense, mixing, so it turns out to be a neurogotic one. So, um, more precisely, this is just a, an intuitive um, way of saying, so more precisely, this, why, how, what does that mean by approximate? More precisely, um, so if mu is logotic for this action, then there exists a point, actually there will be, such point will be uh, as mm, mu measure one, um, such that um, the following is true. Um, for any the limit of n tends to infinity, um, f g x zero d m m. Yeah, this is uh, um, the higher measure on the compact group goes to. Um, Mu. This holds for any continuous bounded function on X. So if we write this in the following way, um, this is X F D M K M my notation in the exercise. So here, um, mkm x0 is the push forward of the following map. Km j x0 x that sends g to the orbit. So these, these convergence actually says exactly that um, this sequence of orbital measures goes weakly to our original ergodic measures. Yes? Uh, yes, this 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 is the orbit of the subgroup. Um, yes. This this measure is a push forward of this. So we have a uh, of how measure. Yes, yes. So, um, at least uh, this gives us an abstract uh, way of uh, um, studying uh, ergodic measure. And it's important here that any ergodic measures can be approximate. So, first, we should study those measures which can be actually approximate by um, orbital measures. And by the way, in fact, uh, those measures which can indeed by, uh, be approximate by um, sequence of uh, orbital measures, um, a priori is not ergodic. But uh, um, in general, it's not ergodic. But at least we uh, can restrict ourselves to studying a smaller uh, subclass, and uh, uh, it, it turns out to, to be very successful. So let us give an example. So we can actually, using this theorem, 
to prove uh, um, Schoenberg, Schoenberg theorem. Let us recall the Schoenberg theorem, but uh, um, for simplicity, we can do this for um, real case. So we have O infinity. This is just the union of OM. So this is n times m our subgroup, group. And uh, we are in the same situation because here OM is uh, um, viewed as uh, uh, such group. This is n times n part. This is orthogonal. And here is zero. And indeed, these, so these compact groups um, goes up to the whole group. And we consider the group action of O infinity acts on Rn. And explained yesterday, uh, the group action is just, so every element is of this form, and uh, this part acts on the first m coordinates and the leave um, does nothing for those coordinates afterwards. So, um, suppose we are given, um, suppose that mu is now um, ergodic for this group action, then we actually can find uh, x0 in this um, space. x0, let me write as a vector, infinite column vector in Rn such that Um, M K M O N X zero approximates our mu, and let us continue. Um, what does this mean? So these are exactly um, probability distribution. of the following um, vector. So we have uh, uh, zero, zero, infinite one. And here we choosing, let me write W, M, um, a higher random, so a random matrix, random matrix, uniformly from OM acts on our point x0. This is x1 to xm. And after it sends some point, some coordinate. So this is the, actually this is just the definition of orbital measures, choosing these uh, um, randomly as it should, should be. But we know that um, the how measure is invariant um, by left multiplication, right multiplication. So here I can choose, I can change Wm to Wm and so here's a still random, and some Vm, which is, this is still random. This is uh, uh, the deterministic So actually here is in distribution, they are the same. Distribution, distribution. This dynamic element, just an element in, uh, of this in OM. But I choose this 
Wm such that because here Xn is fixed, I can choose Wm such that Wm on this point x1 to xn here star star will be um, one element here some lambda um, m zero zero afterwards because this group action can change this um, this is a transitive on the uh, uni on the sphere of those uh, coordinates from one to m, and we don't do anything for the rest of the coordinates. Of course, we can find w n such. This is true. So this is in distribution. The same as WM. Here's one infinity. And something, this can change because we change. This N is actually given by the sum of x1 square x. Uh, so the sum of this is equals to the sum of that. And the lambda n is positive. Lambda m. So this is just a, a column vector, a random vector. And if we look at so what does it mean, mu, the convergence of these two days? This means for every coordinate, so for any finite coordinate, the joint, the, uh, uh, the projection on any finite coordinate, uh, the, um, the measure goes to uh, this, uh, the, that projection of mu to that finite coordinates. So we can only look at a fixed, so this is in fact some random vector. And if we just look at those n coordinate, which is fixed, and we let n goes to infinity, then, and we can grow later, so first study for fixed m, then for any m, we, if we know that actually this is a Gaussian measure, then this means actually mu is Gaussian measure. So we need a following exercise. Um, so how to uh, construct a random power matrix? So random power means uh, random, but uh, with re respect to how measure orthogonal matrix from O n. So, the exercises show that um, the Grand-Schmidt procedure, uh, the Grand-Schmidt procedure of uh, um, Gaussian matrix G, which is G I J. So everything is independent and the standard Gaussian. The Gauss, the Grand Smith procedure with respect to, for example, rows or columns. For us, it will be more convenient with uh, uh, columns. With respect to columns, um, gives 
random ha a random ha orthogonal matrix. So, of course, for fixed M. So, in particular, this means. Um, so, what do we do by Gran Schmidt? So, for first column, we just normalize it. So, and here, uh, what does this mean? This is just uh, we take, um, we multiply um, the first thing. The, the first uh, though, uh, yes, we just multiply the first, uh, this gives, in fact, um, they thing, zero, and here is just uh, um, the first column of WM multiply, multiplied by this constant. But the first column in distribution, um, this is in distribution the same as um, as, okay, our right lies, like G1 um, sum of G1 square G2 square GM over. We just normalize the first column. This is the first step of doing Grand Schmidt. But we are care about only the first n coordinates. Coordinates. And we don't forget that we multiply by some constant here. And it turns out uh, there are some uh, subtlety here. For such measured convergence, uh, a necessary and con a necessary uh, um, condition is um, lambda m over um, lambda m over um, m should converges. Um, should converges actually. Um, yes, this should converges. This is a necessary condition such that um, such the uh, such measure. Uh, we have such convergence. And that's this condition. This is by Fourier transform. So if we only care about those n first columns, we can write now m, m square root m and uh, g i so um, this times m, so I will move here um, where it's g1, g, m, and square over m. So we, this in fact is the first, um, first m coordinates. But then we use the uh, uh, law of large numbers. This goes to one, almost surely. And we have a necessary condition. This converges, for example, to the, uh, delta positive. Then we get, this is uh, approximately, um, when n is large, this is just a delta of G1, G2, 
GM. And this is for fixed M, but that big N goes to infinity. And actually, this is for any N. So finally, uh, the, this measure, this measure has to be a Gaussian measure. So, but we haven't finished. What we, what we have proved now is um, a Gaussian measures must be a Gaussian measure. But I haven't proved that any Gaussian measure is actually a no Gaussian measure. And uh, the fact is that any, orbit, any Gaussian measure is uh, actually an, a Gaussian measure is argued uh, um, by the Finiti theorem because Gaussian measures here is just uh, um, zero so data. It's kind of a Bernoulli measure. And uh, um, there's a subgroup of the own infinity that permutates coordinates. So, and we already know the, this product measure, pro, uh, measure powers is already regarded for a subgroup. So it is already, they, uh, it is also um, regarded for the big group. Okay, so in fact, this is the philosophy um, behind um, for our treatment of uh, um, the um, periodic case. I didn't mention that this periodic is not uh, um, essential, so any uh, non local, uh, any non Archimedean local field works. Um, so, um, how many time? Okay. Um, so now let us go back to the setting of geo infinity zp times g l infinity zp. Piatic integers action on the infinite matrices qp. Uh, let us uh, uh, restart this procedure. So let mu be a ergodic measure and ergodic measure for the above action. Action. Uh, by the way, uh, this is an or, 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 this is simple, but uh, it requires some something. This necessary condition, and uh, this is a key point here also. Mm. For the above action, then there exist, then there exist uh, a point, infinite matrix, such that. Um, such that uh, um, this, the finite, the compact ones, compact uh, arbitral measure converges weakly to this Lagarde measure. That is a uh, uh, Wershik theorem. Now, recall our, uh, so, so, okay, we do the same. What does this mean? This, by definition, it's uh, the uh, push forward of the following, um, of the following map. Uh, here's G1. Um, no. Let me write probably x, y, to x. Here's x zero, um, y minus one. Um, since this is, this group is a compact group, the distribution so the the, the push forward of this map is uh, this orbital measure. But uh, we actually, we want to do this. This, this is the same, because y and y inverse, uh, they have the same distribution. The, 
So we have here, and X, in fact, in fact it's, uh, uh, we, should cons we should look at it as this, X1. So we have here X and infinite 1. And here, X0, I will divide, di divide by two, three, uh, four copies. and don't care about what's here. Um, let me write, uh, OK. Um, this is a part A. And here is um, Y. 0, 0, 1, infinity. And since we do the same thing, um, recall that um, A can be written as um, W1 diagonal since P minus K1. This is the second uh, exercise of W2. Of course, this this Kn depends on n, the, 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 the size of A, and this depends on m. And here, W1, W2, they are just some fixed, um, some fixed uh, element in GL and ZP. Here's the fixed in GL and ZP. So by the invariance of multiplication, we can absorb, absorb this W1 to here, but without changing the distribution here and absorb the other here. So um, without loss of generality, we can, um, we can suppose here it's this diagonal matrix. Of course, we cannot um, argue directly that uh, uh, the whole matrix is, is, a, di um, is a, a diagonal one. So, but then we only care about uh, a small corner of this big uh, matrix, big random matrix. So we care about this corner, we care, so we look at uh, uh, the L times L up corner, upper left, uh, um, northwest corner, uh, upper left corner of our big run, uh, big random matrices. ML, but ML is a, a ML is it is a, it is a corner uh, L times L corner of um, in distribution in distribution it's the same as uh, um, a corner of uh, um, X here and the diagonal one P one M P, okay, uh, M, M, Y, where X, Y are uniformly sampled from our compact group G, L, M, Z, P. So what, what do we do if we look at the L times L corner? That means we times here, one, one, one L times and zero, 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 and X M, and here Y, this is our original matrix. And if we want to look at L times L corner, that means we times from both sides such matrix, L times. This, so this, this gives us ML thing um, and something I don't, I don't want to, I don't, uh, I don't care for the moment. But what does this mean? This is uh, uh, 
if I just look at this, so x is a random, a randomly, randomly chosen from, uniformly chosen from um, G, L, and Z, P. And we care about the first L rows. L rows. And we do the same thing here. This is our x. This is our y. And we multiply this matrix. Then we only care about the first L columns. Uh, now we will use actually a variant of uh, uh, the last exercise um, from yesterday. Uh, so here, we multiply this, it's just, we multiply here by P minus K 1 M, multiply here by P minus K 2 M, and here multiply by P minus K M N, and uh, multiply this matrix, rectangular matrix, by this rectangular matrix. So, okay, suppose, suppose we know, suppose that uh, we know that approximately this sim, this first, first columns, first rows or first columns that actually they are in, just by transit, uh, transposition, the behavior they are the same. But they are independent, of course. Um, if we know this is from um, L first columns, first rows of X, is approximately um, the L first rows of a random matrix uniformly from this map, this group, this compact group. So what does this mean? So suppose we know that the first L columns, they're actually very close to independent, uh, uniformly sampled from the uh, Piatic integer, which is a compact group, then we can conclude that uh, this thing is, so here we can write as x, um, so we, we actually have, so everything will be independent. Suppose everything is independent, and uh, we get actually um, So this is uh, uh, one point that we will later try to convince this is true. And that second point, a necessary condition, uh, which needs some Fourier analysis on periodic field, um, is um, the soup M K1 M should be finite, should be bounded. And by the way, all this uh, uh, K1 to Kn, um, recall that K1, they are decreasing, and uh, in Z, in union minus infinity. So since the big one is bounded, and we know that, uh, uh, so suppose this is bounded for some number C, then we know that Z less than C union uh, minus infinity. This is compact. This is compact set, and uh, uh, the power set is again a power set. So in fact, we can assume without loss of generality that actually these k one and k and n they converge to a to a point to a point. So in this, so we can actually erase this. 
So we, so we have the, this, the, this thing and the trans transposition of this thing and everything is independent and uh, we multiply things like this. Then we get the um, L corner is approximately like the sum of P minus K M. Um, this N can be, uh, because it can be from one to N and larger and larger, it's in fact it's from uh, one to infinity and uh, uh, everything is independent. Um, this is actually um, I, M, Y, N, J. So I can, I can put this index upside this is this is approximately days um, where x i m y j n are just uh, independent and uniformly uh, sampled from um, z p. But remember, uh, this is not uh, precisely. Uh, what we proved. We also have something like what we write, wrote yesterday. We have something like P minus K Z I J things. Um, this, I will give an exercise here. I will uh, turn back. An exercise. Uh, Following thing. So actually, uh, it is the following. Uh, if yes, this K M is just a decrease in sequence. But if it starts, it's not strictly decreasing. It can start uh, um, stop at some point and repeat K K K K K K K. So. The, what I would like to give an exercise is following. So uh, probably this is, this is what we have is PKXI. So let us just look at one one um, point Y. One one M. So this is from um, and from one to m, the distribution of this converges to p k of z, which is uh, z is uniform uh, uniformly from from z p. Actually, the the precise exercise I want to give the following. Suppose. G is a compact abelian group and suppose uh, mu is mu is a probability measure on G so because we are in group setting, we can define the convolution of mu. So convolution of mu is the following. So we have g times g. Um, here is g. Um, we are in compact setting, so there's no. So the push forward. So we have mu here, mu, mu. And by this map, the push forward we will denote by convolution 2. This is just a recall. So the convolution power M converges weakly to the higher measure of the closed subgroup generated by uh, generated by as the support of mu. Um, just give a hint, study the Fourier 
coefficient Fourier analysis of this measure. Okay, so actually uh, this is very close to uh, our final result. Um, then let us uh, go back to this uh, um, technical part. Um, why the else first rows of a, which is in fact an invertible matrix is appro approximately it's just a, a coefficient without any um, restriction. So L is fixed, but here N, is, N goes to infinity. The, the size goes to infinity, but we look at uh, just uh, a fixed uh, small corner. Yes, so. Ah, uh, so you, we can write it like here. For example, this is xij. This is uh, yij. So what is the... So we, we, this is here, and what is the ij coefficient of the um, product of three matrix? Yes, this is ij to the n. So actually, if we write it correctly, ll, l, uh, no, this is not the right um, index. This is uh, m, 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 this is to m, and m, is the size of these big matches, but we let m goes to infinity. Uh, actually, uh, the, okay, this is m to n. This n goes to infinity. Um, so I probably can give a proof of the last exercise, which gives a hint of such thing. Um, do we, how many times do I have? Two minutes. Okay, so these are in GL and GP. So it's not easy to analyze directly, but uh, uh, let us look at a finite version, um, MFP. So this is finite group. This is uh, n times n invertible matrix. And I want to look at uh, the first L rows. And I want to say this, this is approximately um, First rows and uh, independent, uh, everything is uniformly sampled from FP. So this can be looked at following. So, by the way, how we count the numbers of this finite set? The, the way we, uh, a convenient way of counting the uh, Counting the cardinality of this set is first we choose a non zero uh, vector, and we have uh, p times n choice, minus one choice, and then for choosing the second one, we choose um, from, the, from the subset of from the subset of f p to the power n from those vectors which are linearly independent uh, from the chosen one. So we excluded uh, a subspace generated, the linear subspace generated by a non-zero vector. So the second row we have choice Pn minus uh, P. And for the, we continue, um, the first, for the third row we choose from um, the subset uh, which is outside of the 
linear space generated by two independent, linear independent thing. Okay. So we actually compute to P M minus P L minus one and etc. But you see that we see that if we fixed uh, L those which are linear independent and uh, the method of com P, uh, to uh, completing such matrix to be a invertible matrix, the way, the number of ways of completing is independent of the choice, of the fixed choice. So if I'm fixed to something linear independent, then I know how many ways. How many ways is just the rest of the uh, thing. So actually, um, this distribution will be a um, uniform distribution of um, a subset, a subset S, F, P, M. Uh, so this is uh, uh, the vector, uh, how to say, um, we have V1, VL, that are linearly independent. Independent. And here, uh, this is L, uh, okay, FM. And here is a uniform distribution for uh, just V1, VL. There's no restriction. No restriction at all. Just choose any L, just choosing any L um, uh, vectors. Then here we have cardinality, so here we, we have a set S, here we have a, a subset which depends on M. Then we take, we compare actually, so this is a subset of this, we compare actually the uniform uh, distribution on Sn and the uniform distribution on Xm. But if we look at this scene, we actually can um, see immediately that these two things um, equals to one. So asymptotically, uh, these two uh, subset is not very different. And so the uniform distribution on X, Sn and uniform distribution on S and X and are actually very close. Uh, and in fact, uh, um, for here, the argument, uh, this is a starting point, then this is all, uh, will be uh, automatic in some sense by uh, if we know the how measure of this group. Okay, 